Sure. Uh, Richard? Here. Uh, Bev is absent. Gordon? Here. Gwen? Okay, absent. Ace? Absent. Melissa? Here. Hannah? Here. And Spencer? Here. Okay, thank you. You do have quorum. All right, great, thank you. And I'm here. Um, so uh, first on uh, our agenda is uh, public comments. It does look like we have somebody here from the public. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. I'm sorry, I don't think I have a video operating. Uh, I, I always struggle with this stuff apparently, so. Um, but can I uh, go ahead and say a few words? Sure, please. Okay, yeah, thanks. So um, my name is Benjamin Spencer. Um, and I am here to um, invite you all. To, uh, I've been part of a group here in Northampton that is the Strong Towns Northampton group. And we meet on the first Tuesday of each month. And, um, and we talk about a lot of um, issues that pertain to the business of the housing partnership. And we were, we're really hoping that, um, that some of the members might be interested in attending our, our upcoming meeting, which is tomorrow evening. Um, there's like a half hour social um, time that starts at 6.30 and then at seven o'clock the meeting begins and it's in the community room at the police station um, on Center Street in downtown Northampton. So um, I think you'd find a lot of uh, kindred spirits and um, we would um, be really um, glad to to have some some more people in the meeting. So just really here to um, put that out there. And then also um, my um, one of the other people on the leadership team, um, Danny, has had been in touch with Keith, and and we also thought that if it made sense for us to come to one of your meetings, um, we'd be happy to do that as well. So if that's something that would make sense uh, for you folks would would be interested in doing that and just telling you sort of what the strong towns northampton group is is about and and things like that so but certainly um you're all welcome to attend um tomorrow night's meeting or or whenever you know first tuesday of each month that's going to happen and we have a facebook page that um has a lot of information about it as well that's uh, strong towns northampton that's it i'll um i'll mute myself uh, thanks so much, Ben. I appreciate that. Um, so, uh, all right, looks like uh, Gwen has joined us too. Hi, Gwen. Um, next on our agenda is to, uh, well, actually, first of all, did, did we, is there anybody else, Keith, uh, from the public here? Uh, no, it does not look like it. Okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah, next on our agenda is to approve the minutes from uh, May 6, 2024. And um, if I, uh, someone can make a motion. I move to approve the minutes. Do we I'll have a second? That. Okay. Richard, second. Um, and any discussion, any corrections, uh, additions, anything we missed? Um, uh, well, having none, um, uh, all those in favor of approving the uh, May 6th uh, meeting minutes? Say aye. Aye. Uh, hands up. And vote okay, Keith? So um, uh, I did I just want to mention, I mentioned that before the meeting started, I, I do have to leave at, at 6.15 today. So if our meeting is still uh, going on, then um, I'll need to step out. Somebody can help uh, continue the meeting, but um, otherwise our next um, um, uh, topic or uh, item on the agenda is to, uh, where are we? 
sorry, I lost the, uh, is to discuss um, next steps, I believe, right? For the uh, partnership, um, uh, for membership. Um, also, I, um, I would like to uh, say that I did receive a um, response from both uh, Council Councillor uh, Jarrett and uh, the mayor's office um, about having received our letter um, and wanting to uh, come talk to us about it. Neither uh, could make it here today. Uh, Councillor Jarrett um, said he could make our next meeting uh, for July 1st and uh, the mayor um, uh, ask for the uh, the next dates that we are meeting uh, so that uh, she can try to make it here as well. Um, I have not responded to either yet, so I just wanted to bring that to the attention of the of the uh, committee. So uh, having said that, this. Um, did they say anything else other than they wanted to come to the meeting? I was just about to ask that, Rich. E yes. Um, well, they mentioned, um, let me just pull it up here. Um, uh, they mentioned really wanting us to, uh, wanting to talk to us about uh, the letter. Um, uh, and they, they it's, I'm sorry, let me just pull it up here. Uh, so first I heard from uh, Councillor Jarrett uh, and he said, thank you for this letter. I am unable to make it to today's meeting, but could make the meeting on Monday, July 1st, if that one is happening. I'd be happy to talk and uh, with individual members in addition, anytime. Um, and, uh, from the mayor's office, um, uh, dear Gardo and members of the Housing Partnership, thank you for taking the time to share your concerns with us. Mayor Ciara has seen your letter and is dedicated to helping you reach your goals as a public body. While she's unable to attend tonight's meeting, the mayor would love to attend a meeting in the near future to discuss this with you and assist in your strategic planning process. Could you please send your meeting schedule so that we can find a suitable date? So who sent that? That, that that's not the mayor's. It's in the third person. Um, uh, it, uh, yes, it is. Uh, office of the mayor. Uh, best regards, Sydney. Sydney from the mayor's office. Okay. Okay. I don't, I don't know who that is. is. That the like her executive assistant, McKeith, or somebody. Sydney Fahey or Foley. Oh, uh, yes, it's the mayor's assistant. Okay. Well, we can certainly let her know that Councillor Jarrett is coming July 1st. That would be great. I don't, is it, is it better to have them together? I mean, our dates are known. I mean, because you could put out all, you know, first Monday. And we're keeping that one, right? April, July 1st is a Monday. Yeah. 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 Um, maybe it's the mood I'm in, but A, our meetings are a matter of schedule as a matter of public record. And for the mayor to not even take the time to sign the letter herself. Uh, I do think when there's a letter that goes out to the members of the partnership, it probably should have gotten forwarded to us as a matter of course, automatically, you know, when it arrived. Keith. Um, yes, I agree, uh, Richard. I felt I almost um, did forward it uh, to every, I just didn't know with open meeting law, I didn't know what the uh, technicality was around that. So I figured the meeting was just today. So um, no fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I mean, I wasn't copied on the mayor's response, but for correspondence like that, you can share it like that provided you're not discussing it amongst the emails. Okay.
Um, and I did start reading some of the uh, Keith, uh, some of the information uh, you sent, so I, I appreciate that. Um, but what are folks thinking in terms of um, uh, moving forward in, in terms of tonight? I mean, um, I mean, I, I'm at, oh, sorry, go ahead and go. I didn't raise my oh, hand. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that without any affirmative direction, whether from the mayor or the city council, I I feel like we would just be talking to do the same meeting that we had last month. Um, I think perhaps talking to the mayor and a city councilor at the same time makes sense so they can, you know, not that, you know, they're the natural political check for each other. So it would be good to have them both in the same room listening to the same concerns coming from all of us. Um, but I just feel sort of, I mean, what are we going to do? We can talk about the weather, but anyway. Thanks, Gwen. That's sure. Um, I just wanted to mention that I attended the Western Massachusetts co Coalition Against Homelessness um, conference this week. Um, and it was very, very packed. And I did see um, GL there. I saw Lindsay Sabadoza there, Joe Clemmerford, um, Secretary of the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities, Ed Augustus. Um, I saw um, Pioneer Valley there. Um, somebody said, oh, I heard um, the housing partnership is dissolving. And I said, oh, I said, oh, I, I don't know about that. So I, I'm not sure what was meant by that, um, but I was there to listen and see what's going on. And uh, I do know Secretary uh, Ed Augustus talked about um, obviously the need to, you know, have more housing um, and also talked about um, putting money into preserving what we have um, on all levels, like um, housing on all levels from low income all the way up. Um, so um, that was one thing I heard. And then I also attended a town hall with the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities online. And it was the final town hall. So there were some things that I um, wanted to discuss um, and I mentioned them there. Um, and so I wanted to mention that I did those two things over the last couple of weeks. Very nice, thank you, Gwen. One thing that that um, Ed Augustus brought up was how they're working on um, reviving or expanding the affordable housing, Massachusetts Affordable Housing Trust Fund, putting money into that. And I think one of the things that I start worrying about is if they're doing that and if the only means of getting money from that fund when needed is to have an affordable housing trust fund, we may not be able to get that money. And the other thing I think about a lot is, does the state perceive Northampton um, as not willing to put in their part because we don't have an affordable housing trust fund? And someone said to me at the event, well, where's the money gonna come from for the trust fund? You have to have money to put into the trust fund. Um, and I really don't have an answer for that. And I'm not sure the person was really looking for an answer or if they just wanted to sort of make a point. Um, but I wanted to share that as well. Yeah, Richard. Um, just because everyone may not know this, uh, Councillor Jarrett was actually a member of the Housing Partnership for several years, uh, and he is quite dedicated to housing issues 
and he's my ward counselor. I don't always agree with him, but I certainly am very aware and commend his willingness to talk to anybody and his dedication to his service. So I think that was a genuine offer on his part. And it might be, I mean, it's certainly a, a meeting of the partnership would be a great way, but it's also if they're wanted, if one or two members of the partnership wanted to talk to him informally, uh, that certainly is, I think, a genuine option that he was extending. Yeah, that's that's a great point, Richard. And I agree. And, he, and he resigned, if I'm recalling correctly, because he became a counselor. He ha he wasn't a counselor at the time when he served on this. He ran and then got elected. Now he's the president. Um, which makes me think, you know, there was a time I don't remember if there is anything in our ordinance that prohibits a counselor from serving on this committee. Um there's nothing. So, I mean, that could be when we think, I mean, if we think about what we want to use this meeting for, if we are going to have a, a guest or two that next meeting, we should be ready to think about what it is we want to cover with them and what our what our ask is beyond what's in the letter. Um, and I, I just think it would be so much more powerful to have a liaison who's on the council to be part of this. We have a vacancy, don't we? So we can fill it with we can we can make that request of Councillor Jarrett that he not you know he may be too busy these days but it might maybe there's somebody else that wouldn't be willing to serve. Uh, Gordon, there is no there is no prohibition that I can recall, but it's not a requirement that yeah the member be on there. The original ordinance had designated particular seats with different type, with different associated with different entities, and the council was one of them. But that's we've gone away from that. But um, but there's some historical. There's a tradition of having a council. When I first joined, there were there were counselors. Uh, there was like Ma Maureen Carney was the uh, counselor who was on. Uh, she's no longer a counselor, but she was on the on the partnership. And I, um, not to keep, if anybody else had any comments, I was, I was just going to talk about something that's slightly off the, the ask track, which I agree with Gordon that we should definitely think about what our asks would be if we get some of our elected officials. So I'm happy to stay this comment until later, but um, it was just a discussion I was having over the weekend about with people about you know, er, that people were coming to me saying areas that the housing partnership could look at. Um, and and one of those was um, perhaps, I don't know, in looking, working with the city planning department on the changing zoning rules to encourage denser development. Um, and I don't know if that's, I, I would imagine that's marginally within our purview if we can talk about, put housing in it or not. Oh, uh, it's very much in the purview. We have spent, there have been periods of time when we have had a zoning subcommittee and gotten into the nitty gritty of trying to do just what you're talking about. Yeah, and I, I can say is since I only live in Northampton because my in-laws were able to use the newer denser zoning to subdivide the unit that they own so that we could violate setback but on one side but it does seem to be an opportune area that maybe we can throw some effort at just because you know i think everybody well everybody the city obviously needs tax revenue denser zoning would generate greater tax bases potentially and if there are ways from a housing perspective you know i live on not through my own will but just by pure luck on massasoit street and obviously we can't get that de any denser under the current zoning laws and i think that you would find that repeating across 99 percent of our communities um, and so if there's an area that we could look at you know, zoning's gotten a lot of attention thanks to the car dealership lately, but it, it could be a ripe time to say, maybe we look at our, you know, work with the zoning or city planning department and identify like 
if we're in a city center like we want to be, maybe we should be looking at like zero lot lines or something like that. Just an idea. Yeah, thank just, you, um, Spence. Yeah, go ahead, Gwen. Uh, just to add to that, um, EOHLC is, is talking about wanting to increase the number of ADUs. Um, ADUs make it possible for families to stay together. Um, and for people to age in place. It's also a really great thing to do if you have adult children with disabilities um, or you know things like that. I, I think that we need to find out more about what's going on with that type of zoning. Um, and um, infrastructure, how we could somehow um, take advantage of the infrastructure bill and work that with um, more intensive, you know, more dense um, housing in terms of, you know, I think one thing that people are always talking about is water management and things like that. And, um, so thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah. Thank you, Glenn. Okay, so anyone else want to chime in? I just want to say one more thing. <laughs> Evictions are up in Western Massachusetts. It's they're up like by a massive percent. And to me, what that says is that um, there are like some fundamental issues that are not getting addressed. Um, a lot of times what I've been hearing in terms of evictions is, you know, we're seeing people go in who maybe would benefit from a guardianship or um, maybe a rep payee or um, maybe they need some accommodations and where they are is not accommodating where they live. Um, and so they, they have trouble where they live. Um, these are the evictions that we're looking at lately. Um, and so, um, and then, you know, the other concern I have is like, you know, I feel sometimes like the housing partnership should be a place where people can come, where we can invite leaders, community leaders to come in and say, hey, how's it, how's it going? You know, how are you doing? You know, how, how's it going in ward one? How's it going in ward two, three, four, five, or <laughs> whatever. I just, I think there's some way we can involve the community more. And um, also, maybe also like, um, I think the DCC may have some insight um, in terms of the people that they're seeing um, come into their um, their location and what they're seeing locally in terms of evictions. Well, you got me, I'm in housing court every week and I, 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 can, I, can, test, I can test be a testament to what you just said, but I will add that there is a GAL process in housing court. It's used quite frequently, sometimes to the chagrin of legal services attorneys and the the, the tenants themselves, uh, taking away their autonomy. But there are there are you know uh, I'll tell you what the real crisis is is the there the amount of no fault evictions being filed for people getting either new new buyers buying a property, investors uh, moving tenants out because they want to raise rents and rehab buildings, um, and there's no place for these people to go. They can't find something comparable that they can afford. Yep. And, and I, that, that and speaks I, to the affordable housing issue, both as as a capital A and lower A. It um, it really does, and and also that that does remind me that there was a woman at the conference who has lived in the same apartment. This is in Springfield for twenty years. It's the neighborhood that she's always known, and 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 when she when her landlord was selling the property, they made a deal on a contract where she would not be evicted. Well, guess what? So, um, you know, there's that. And um, so that's, that is, that is happening a lot where we're seeing, you know, these invisible buyers um, come in and, you know, so 
There's um, bills pending to deal with some of this, some of a nascent effort that kind of got abandoned for, for rent control again, to bring that back. It didn't, yes. there's still a movement yeah. to do that. Um, but beyond that, there is there is a right to counsel bill that's been stalling yes. along the way, but it's a funding issue more than anything else to give every tenant access to a lawyer. Um, right. It's New York has done it, but Massachusetts. New York has, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the other thing that that reminds me of is um, my experience, um, and I will share my personal experience of having gotten a Section 8 um, and trying, it took me three months every single day, um, all day. It was all consuming to find an apartment. But in the, in the process, I was working with an agent and we both observed and experienced uh, quite a lot of discrimination and local landlords that are in Northampton saying, oh, we don't want to do all that. We just want a normal rental. So pushing away the Section 8. Um, and so there is so much education that needs to happen around that. And also maybe some reporting that needs to get done. Um, you know, I felt like I was a fly in a wall while I was looking for an apartment. It was, it yeah. was incredible. I was told, well, we do have some apartments, but we only have certain ones that aren't really updated. And I think that's also not allowed. Yeah. So um, the, the, I wanted to share that. The issue of being able to use your voucher, it's great to get one, but then, you know, you, you have a cap on the rent that you can, you, you can rent with. So, and that, that's an issue we've tried to take on. Exactly as well. right. And I just want to say that I'm at an advantage because I have white skin. So I'm putting that out there. But anyway, maybe we can bring it. I know this, Edgardo has to has to leave in like 15 minutes. So maybe we can just bring it back to, to what how to respond to the two um, uh, to uh, to our elected rep, elected persons who are uh, we want to bring. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that for the mayor, it's like he is our, we meet every first Monday of the month. Um, except probably September, because September 2nd is the first Monday, and that's Labor Day. But beyond that, hopefully it won't go that far, either July or August. But it'd be great. To, do we want them both together? Would July 1st be the better day? Um, can I just quickly speak to that? I, um, everyone's busy, um, but the mayor just went through um, um, the budget and last two meetings uh, were like 6 p.m. till 12 or whatever, uh, two nights in a row. So, um, and it's been very contentious. So I know that's been happening. Um, uh, so I don't think, and there's a lot of committees. And so I don't know when all the other ones meet, but um, so it's not, I don't think it's a, a lack of caring. It's other more pressing brain space is involved in the budget at the moment. Uh, yeah, Hannah, and then um, Richard. Yeah, I was just going to say that I would love to, I mean, if Alex is available for next month's meeting, I think it would be great to have him um, separate from a conversation with the mayor, because I really value his perspective and experience. I would agree with that. And I do think, you know, and several people have talked about it tonight, we need to think about what our asks are. I mean, I think one of the fundamental sort of broad asks is going to be, you know, what role are you willing to have the partnership play in the community? But I think that's not a specific enough ask. And I, I think we've talked about it, but let me see if I can suggest uh two of them. One is that uh, we are operating under the premise that you can never have too much money, and we would like to have a much more thorough discussion about the housing trust fund rather than having it be dismissed out of hand as an administrative inconvenience. And I think that's certainly one of the asks. And the other that I would suggest to us, you know, I understand the mayor is busy, everybody's busy, but uh, I think everybody knows that the housing crisis is one of the critical issues that affects a broad swath of, you know, citizens locally, nationally, 
everywhere. And um, I think that the original principle of the housing partnership where any issue in town that affects housing affordability and housing availability ought to be referred to the housing partnership and we ought to be brought into that discussion to um, help bring our insight into it. So I'm suggesting that we compile a list of asks and have that work with Alex about that and see what he says. And so that's what I I, I also, thank you, Richard. Um, I also agree that I'd like to have um, Councillor Jarrett just alone for one meeting. Um, and then um, we can have GL at a, another time. Okay. Yeah, that means uh, that that sounds really good. I appreciate you all bringing that up. Um, I do agree with uh, with that. Um, and thank you, Richard, for um, you know bringing up the the few asks that we know for sure uh, that we want to have for that day. Um, I I will say though that uh, for um, that I have actually decided that July first will be my last meeting. Uh, with the housing partnership, um, and um, but uh, I remain very, uh, very uh, supportive of the municipal affordable housing trust fund being reinstated. And if that happens, um, I, I will be the first one applying for uh, uh, for a seat uh, on that committee, um, uh, as I think it should be our top priority uh, for for this, uh, for our housing partnership here in terms of focus uh, on that and, and trying to uh, to bring that back because we do know that uh, that the Municipal Affordable Housing Trust Fund uh, does provide a lot of the solutions that uh, we're looking for, particularly here in Northampton. So um, I just wanted to put that out there um, um, so that folks know my timeline. Um, as I've said before, Unfortunately, I cannot afford uh, to be here uh, at the moment. Um, but uh, I look forward to collaborating in other ways. So there, there's a subcommittee that I could uh, uh, be helpful with uh, taking action. Uh, I'm definitely all for it. And please count on my, uh, on my uh, assistance. Uh, Spencer, just jump in to say it'd be terribly sad to see you go, even though we've only been on this for a little bit, Eduardo. Um, and uh, I, I think my only comment in terms of the asks for the the mayor and the city council would, would be, I, I think we should affirmatively ask them, you know, if not this trust then what you know and, and saying like this is what we as a collective group have determined to be a viable tenable solution while but whatever we say but if that's not what you want us to be doing tell us you know what we're not you know like we keep saying you know it's not up to i mean we can come up with ideas till our you know but if you're not going to listen to us, what do you want? And I, and I think that sort of policy direction is something that naturally will come from the two of them or both of them. You know, just give us a direction to point at, to work towards. Because, and I think, and I and I'm sad you're not going to be there, Agardo, but we should tell the 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 mayor and the city council that like, look, we're losing good people because we don't have direction and this is not going to stop. Um, and, you know, give us something, but anyway. Well, maybe the first question to ask the mayor um, is what is your housing plan? Do you have a housing plan? <laughs> How do you how do you how how do you see Northampton developing affordable housing over the next over the you know the the next 
what's her term? It's a two-year term. Is it two years? Four years? Yeah. <laughs> Um, probably get reelected, but um, you yeah, know, I, mean, I, I, I'm all about, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah, and I'm, I'm going to assume that my only concern, and and this is me being nice, which is sort of a novelty in this context, but is you know, it, it's she doesn't have one. Let's be honest, right? Because if she if she had one, we'd already know what it was, ideally. And we'd already be working towards executing it. And maybe she does and just hasn't told us. Let's let's hope. But you know, it I I think that you know we're probably not a priority for all the reasons that we talked about previously. Um, and you know, that especially in that the mayor's office seems to think that they can have tackled the problem in an efficient manner historically, um, at least in the recent decades. So yeah, I think we need to balance the holding the feet to the fire is also like, listen, OK, we get it. you got a million things to do. You're not paid enough. And I have kids in the school system and I'm, you know, I'm marching with effigy just with everybody else. So, like, let, let's let's help you take stuff off your plate. Right. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And, and so let's let's work towards that. Another another thing that I just I, I haven't even mentioned this yet, but, you know, I know EOHLC came out here to Northampton and I believe it was the mayor and some other city councilors. I don't know if you were there, Keith, to go up to Hospital Hill and go see all the new housing there. And Secretary Augusta said, oh, this is the way it should be done. You know, this is like a nice little neighborhood. Um, you know, this is the way affordable housing should be done. Um, but, um, you know, there are voices that were not there at the table, such as the Northampton Housing Partnership, as far as I know. I don't think anyone from the partnership went on that um, visit with with the mayor and with Ed Augustus. And, um, and of course, you know, we do have a very small uh, population of low-income people in Northampton who don't have a voice or whose voices are quite regularly silenced or whatever and so or uh, you know I, I I think that um you know that's that's kind of like well if you do have a housing plan you know why are we not at the table with you on this and um why isn't anyone letting us know um about these things like kind of like the planning meeting that we didn't know about um you know I mean it should be I don't know if it's just um, like a habitual thing that people just kind of pick up the ball and start doing things without considering all of the stakeholders. But um, I don't know, that's just some thoughts that I have. Thanks. Yes, definitely, thank you. Um, uh, a few people have mentioned about um, feeling goalless or not having direction and, you know, it's I kind of want to bring it back to the fair housing assessment and I, I did revamp and go back into, as you saw, our accomplishments, uh, your accomplishments. Um, but I mean, uh, Gwen had talked about um, Section 8 and, you know, one of the things is uh, to work with, you know, landlords about Section 8. Uh, we have done education before, you know, we did a, an eviction um, kind of I don't know if you all remember this in 2021 or something, um, evictions um, during COVID. Um, but there's a lot of you know education and and working with uh, developers or uh, with the city on different policies. I know we talked uh, 2020 2021. We did talk to the housing authority about certain things like the um, small area FMR. Um, and there was some conversation about, you know, looking at the um, the local uh, local preference, um, which there's some tent, you know, there's I think there was some heated discussion about that. But um, there are things um, absolutely goals um, that are uh, attainable, and we've seen from you know the letters uh, in support of things at the state house that once we get it. If it's something that requires some state 
um, um, process, it can take a little while. So it might be good to have um, different things in the fire that cook at different times. Um, and so as uh, with the zoning, um, those things, we can still a little bit longer conversation maybe, but um, we can, uh, we know all the players and, you know, they're all right in, um, in the city. So uh, just want to um, kind of bring it back to, you know, I think the mayor, and I've heard this multiple times, even with the I staff the Disability Commission, is the mayor has appointed you all because, you know, of your professional experience or your experience as a land, you know, as a tenant or um, a landlord or something like that, and that she respects your opinion and wants to have these good informed decisions. And that, you know, a, some of these things are not the um, the uh, expertise of the mayor or say in disability commission, it's someone's lived experience. You know, Gwen has experience of having discrimination based on section eight or her name or something like that. Um, and so having these informed discussions and I will agree, yeah, some of these things are very complex, like the municipal affordable housing trust fund. You all have done the research and made a recommendation, but now there is some, okay, like how, if, if we're to go forward, how do we get this? And I think um, maybe it's not all discussed um, over one meeting, but there are some just practical things. Um, and so not just the trust fund, uh, but some of the other things, like what's the mechanism right. to do it? And I think um, just because the answer is no right now, doesn't mean we can't have further conversation. So. Right. Um, I just want to mention the small area F FMR. Those small area FMRs do not go into effect. Like in other words, what the rate of rent was last year um, goes into effect this year. So it's always behind. Um, and then the other thing is that there is some decision-making that the housing authority has done. Well, we could do a small area um, increasing that, or we could have more vouchers. So what should we do? The purpose of the Section 8 program is actually to enable people to move up, to move into, into communities that out of poverty. It's it's the idea is is uh, mobility, economic mobility. Um, the other thing is the local housing authority does not support home buying programs for people who get Section 8. So um, that's that's. That's really um, a, a lot of a lot of communities do do that. I it's um, Holyoke does it, um, Boston does it. Um, so there's a program where you can you know save your money as you once you get into Section Eight. You can you can use the Section Eight as a down payment. Um, you can save your money and not have it held against you as income. Um, these are wonderful wonderful programs, and I would really really love to see that happening more um, in this city, in this city. Thanks. I do agree there's a lot to work on. Yeah, the small area Fair market rent thing is a tough, tough nut to crack, and we have had discussions with the housing authority. We even talked to Representative McGovern about the issue, trying to take it to the federal level. Um, it ke keeps stalling, and, and, and the, the classic argument that the housing authority puts forward is the one you just articulated, which is that it's a trade-off. If you want us to pay more uh, to um, approve more a uh, higher rents, then that means it's going to cost more for the subsidy, and that means that we'll be able to assist fewer people. But nobody's getting housed anyway. So what it ends up being is that nobody gets housed. The voucher goes away. It, it really almost, I mean, it was right down to the day for me. And I am not a person of color. I'm not a person with visible disabilities. Um, I am not showing up 
um, with any kind of a need for a reasonable accommodation. Um, you know, I'm, you know, so um, just from my own lived pers personal, most recent experience, it was really, really tough. And I would say, if not doing that, how about the home buying? Let's do what Holyoke is doing. Um, you know, let's mobilize people so that people can get up and out of public housing and make room for the next family or the next individual who needs a home. And so I think that's um, important. Thanks. I'm still here, y'all, uh, folks. Thanks, Edgardo. So, I mean, I think that, um, I think that what we have here uh, in the partnership right now is just, um, it, it's, it's, a, um, it's a disconnect, right? It's a disconnect um, with the city's um, uh, priorities for housing. Um, I think that um, a, a meeting with uh, Councillor Jared next month and uh, thereafter with the mayor uh, will hopefully uh, help us help us to um, to fill the gap between you know I just it's just there's there's that disconnect right um, we don't want to start thinking about projects, thinking about what we could do if it's not if it's not in the uh, city's agenda and we're gonna get um, turned down anyway. So I think that's where, that's where we are right now is that we know a lot of the things that could be done that need to be done and, and the things that we want to focus on at the moment is just how are we going to work uh, in collaboration with the city so that meetings with developers aren't happening without us being invited or that visits from the state to one of the housing uh, communities that we've worked so hard to build here um, and we, we're not invited. Uh, so those kinds of things, I think, is, I think that's what we need to work on uh, most immediately so that we can be on the same page. Um, Otherwise, folks will, will continue to feel, feel like, you know, they're coming here and they're wasting their time. So um, I, myself, I, I am looking forward to the conversation with uh, Councilor Jarrett next month. Um, I do agree that uh, he is, um, he's always been an advocate uh, for uh, preserving affordable housing in Northampton and um, just uh, uh, with concerns with uh, uh, all tenants, all residents in, in Northampton. So. I do look forward to that, and I do think that, um, you know, it's kind of hard to 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 continue thinking about other things that we can do without really kind of clarifying that, and without, you know, being on the same page with the city. Sounds to me like we have a consensus. This is our top issue. We know what the option is next, which is to meet with the people who are going to determine our future. And uh, uh, I think everything else is peripheral. So I, I uh, in trying to sum it up, because I know Edgardo's got uh, time limitations, I think we have a plan and I would recommend that we call it a day and and think about in the interim what are the things that we want and and have probably what will be a more informal discussion with Councillor Jarrett. Can I, Richard, I think that's an excellent point. Can I bring up something? Um, would um, an in-person meeting with the mayor um, at City Hall um, after the meeting with Councillor Jarrett be helpful? Um, I think uh, it's something me and Carolyn talked about is maybe a way to um, have more, not more formal, but just uh, a little more relaxed and um, online or something. Um, and if we have traditionally taken August off, 
So um, if we're not going to take all of the stuff, um, then we could do it on the normal meeting time, or we could have it uh, sooner than that. Um, but it's an option. Yeah. Um, Why don't we authorize Edgardo to respond to both and say, and, and accept the the, uh, the offer to come, uh, Councilor Jarrett, to the July meeting, and then and then to the mayor, we just say he, we meet. These are the dates. Let us know when that when that when you we are available and then maybe we can decide in July whether it's if, if she says she's not available in August then maybe we can skip August but if she's available I guess then we should take up that opportunity and we can decide then whether to meet in person or continue as a zoom meeting I'm not opposed to meeting in person what yeah I'm not apparently... opposed, I, opposed? I am not I am not opposed to meeting okay. in person okay well, we, you know, we did for, for many, many years. And of course, COVID changed all that. But right. and there's been talk of trying to resume in person. But. Okay. Yeah, and I take Keith's point. I think that there are advantages to an in-person meeting, especially with the mayor. As I recall, in-person meetings are not recorded. Is that correct, Keith? A fully in-person meeting, yes. Tech, it is not. Yeah, she but might it's still open. It's still it's open. open meeting. Right. But, still open to the public and there are notes taken. Yes. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I think Keith's point is worth considering that there might be a different dynamic. I'm generally opposed to in person meetings, but this is important and I would consider it. So I think we've any other new business? Hey, uh, Edgardo, is it okay if I move to adjourn? Yes, thank you, Richard. Uh, I have made and entertain, will entertain a second. I want Edgardo doing too much while he's driving. Anybody want a second a motion to adjourn? Second. Okay, I see it. Uh, all in favor of adjourning, you signify by some hand gesture. Aye. Any, Aye. any opposed? I think the oh. eyes have it. Thank you all. Thank you, Edgardo. And uh, your service has been greatly appreciated. Everybody really owes you a debt of gratitude. <laughs>